So when I was young, we were always running out of air gun pellets. So always hunting around for other things to shoot out of them. And that took me underneath my dad's reloading bench, where I was picking up the spent primers that had been knocked out of the case. So there's three main types of primer. There's a shotgun primer, which we're not interested in in this video. There's the large rifle primer, which is actually 21 calibre, which would probably fit into a 22 calibre air rifle, but I don't have one. And the small rifle primer, which is 0.175 of an inch, which as you'll see is an exact fit for the 17 calibre air rifle, which is 0.177. They tend to be made of brass or uh, nickel plated brass. You do get rifle and pistol primers. They're all the same size. So the small rifle and the small pistol are the same size. The difference is with pistol the cup of the primer is a bit thinner to accommodate for the weaker firing pin in the handguns. You also get uh, magnum primers which contained a uh, slightly different priming compound or more of it which happens to be the lead salt of stifnic acid and gives a hotter and longer spark. I don't have any of those though. There's also two types of anvil, a triple and a double spoked anvil. I'm sure there's no difference when used as a primer, but when used as a projectile, uh, we'll find out. The primers do sit on the rifling, so they won't slide straight through the barrel. You can load them like you normally would a pellet. And because they are engaging the rifling, they do fly relatively straight out to about 10 metres or so. I have shot sparrows and the like with them, and they seem to kill them just fine. Now I know what everyone's thinking, and as kids, when the supply of spent primers ran out, he thought the same as well, so here's some live primers being fired into our brick. So they will explode if they hit anything hard, such as the brick or steel or um, fibro. Um, it's not too reliable against tin cans. Sometimes it'll go against wood, but it'll usually it'll rebound quite fast and there's also a significant danger in shrapnel. If we look back at the primers you'll see the cup which forms the forward part of the projectile hits the target, uh, compresses the priming composition back against the anvil and explodes but when unconstrained that anvil will shoot backwards and if you're unlucky it'll come straight back at you. So here's a few more shots just into some steel plate with some paper taped over the top again at about 10 yards now watch this shot to see the anvil flying backwards so that come back and nearly hit the camera so it's moving quite fast I, I don't think it penetrate the skin but I've never been hit by one. I was wearing a full uh, face shield but I think your eyes are your only real trouble. Anyway I'll show you what happens at longer ranges. So I've moved the steel target back to 50 yards. As you can see as it passes about 10-15 yards the primer will start to spiral and then eventually at about 40 or so yards it will completely flip over and start tumbling where it quickly sheds its velocity and just falls out of the air. So why are the primers spiralling and cartwheeling? Well, I don't know, but I'll try and give some explanation for it. So all bullets yaw as they exit the barrel. In a normal bullet, that's very small. And a primer's going to do the same. And that'll cause the bullet to drift in its direction of the yaw. But the primer's shaped differently, and I imagine it's going to move in the opposite direction. Kind of the difference between a skydiver's moving through the air and a yacht tacking into the wind. 
Now combine this sideways drift with the rotation imparted by the rifling and you get a spiralling flight. Now bullets tend to correct themselves as they pass down range. There will be progressively less yaw and spiralling. The difference with the primer is it's at its most aerodynamic when flying sideways. So as the yaw gets more and more and it starts slowing down the spiralling gets bigger and bigger and as the yaw tips it onto its side uh, it completely flips over and starts tumbling. Now that explanation may only be half right or even completely wrong but no doubt it's going to be a lot more complicated than that simple explanation. Okay so before I finish off the movie I better chronograph them. Uh, first I'll shoot the primer then a lead slug another primer quite a weak air rifle only capable of about 370 380 feet per second with the lead slug and the primer is consistently doing about 200 feet per second faster I've had this air rifle since I was about 10 so she's a bit old and she's not so powerful anymore I don't know how you'd go about putting a primer in a powerful air rifle whether the heated gas as the piston compresses the air will cause problems with the priming compound, I don't know. I have fired them from say six, seven hundred feet per second air rifles, but no faster than that. Anyways, when the primers ran out, we ran on to shooting chook pellets out of the bloody air gun, which ended up clogging the barrel up and it was stuck like that for the next ten years or so. I think that was the catalyst for actually buying this gun I'm using now. Post down in the comments what random shit you've shot out of an air rifle. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Supposedly that's important. I don't know. And um, yeah, that's it.